a video on um, rum barbas. Um, but there's not going to be any rum in it and there's not going to be any fruit in it. So basically it's going to make a Savaran um, batter, dough, Savaran dough. Although it was paste. Savaran paste, that's what my well, my college lecturers called it. Anyway, we're going to make a Savaran dough. So, um, and then what it is, it's basically a uh, enriched um, dough with um, which, you, which is then... Um, soaked in a sugar syrup um i've been I've, I've made them maybe three times and i remember um someone that i worked with telling me that they worked in a place and what they used to do was they used to make rum bar bars and then they and then they used to have them soaking in the syrup for so long that the syrup used to crystallize and they went a little bit crunchy and i think that's kind of quite interesting so it's always been at the back of my mind and it's, I, I kind of thought at some stage that I'd faff around with it. It always put me off because you have, have to um, making bread and yeast and dough and that kind of thing. Oh, I just kind of think it was, a, it was a bit of a hassle and I was always a little bit too busy to do it. But now I make my own bread and you just kind of think, oh, it's just it's just how it is. Um, so, oh yes. Uh, yeah, and I did have faff around. Oh, my nose is running. I did have a, a faff around with making a, a sugar, sugar syrup that crystallised a few months back. Um, so I know what kind of ratio we need to do of sugar and and water. And we need to stay away from putting any lemon juice in it. And I also think we need to stay away from uh, putting any alcohol in it as well. So I think if we were going to do rum barbers, we'd um, do this and add the rum afterwards when we were just about to serve it. But what I have got, I've got this, which is, I can't remember what it's from. I think it's a... Uh, an orange syrup that I made and it's gone crystallized so it's gone right that I think those just those are bad bits they're just burnt bits yeah there's two more bits on the side and they've just um, it's just a bit caramelized is that so I don't know what they were from so anyway this has caramelized and got crystallized and I kind of think it would be nice if we use that as a syrup so it's got that lovely, lovely orange flavour to it. I'll just test. Hmm. Definitely orangey. So we're going to use that as a syrup. I'll need more than that, but that's by the by. So I'm going to do a kilo of flour. So it's a kilo of flour, 50 grams with a salt, 625 grams, 625 grams of milk and eight eggs. So if you break that down, it's 200 grams of strong bread flour, it's two eggs, it's 125 grams worth of sugar, and it's 125 milliliters of, no it's not 125, it's 10 grams of sugar and 125 milliliters of milk, two eggs, 200 grams of sugar. And then I'm using fresh acting yeast, uh, these yeasts are 7 grams and they activate 500 grams worth of um, flour. So we need two packets of yeast. So I'm going to use the machine. I don't want to do it by hand because we're going to have to add some butter to it later on. Um, I've forgotten how much butter is, but we'll get there. We'll, we'll do it when we get there. I'm not going to show me um, mixing this in the, in, the, in the machine. It's just we have to add some softened butter to it later on once it's proved. We have to add some softened butter to it, so it's just going to be easier to do it in the machine, and then we can add some butter to it later on. So all the ingredients in there, and then onto the machine, dough hook, and we're going to give it a knead for ten minutes. I am kind of quite tempted to um, mix it for a bit, then let it sit, and then the uh, flour absorbs all the liquid. Uh, but maybe if this fails and we do it again, we might do that. Yeah, so when I make my bread, what we do is we uh, take the flour, add the water to it, and the sourdough starter. Mix it roughly together so everything's incorporated. We'll leave it for an hour so all the water gets absorbed completely into the flour, and then you, you knead it, and that way you can actually get more liquid into uh, the um, flour, in, yeah, into the flour, uh, and make a wetter bread. But anyway, we're not going to do that. So we'll knead this for 10 minutes using the dough hook on the machine, and then uh, we'll let it prove uh, until it's uh, doubled in size. Right, so I've been kneading for 10 minutes. 
I had to add more flour into it. Uh, I checked the recipe and then I checked it against another recipe. Um, I'm not sure if this recipe is going to work out. Uh, the new recipe um, had more flour in it and had less milk but more butter. So I kind of, I, um, so I think it was, it said, um, what is it? Four ounces. It said four ounces of original recipe, said four ounces of, no, it said eight ounces of flour, 200 grams um, of flour. But that's actually 220 grams of flour, approximately. So I've put in um, some more flour. I've put in another 100 grams worth of flour. Um, and then hopefully the recipe will be right. Um, and hopefully the the less, the more milk in this one will compensate for the more butter that's in the other recipe. But we'll see where it goes. So uh, we'll clean that off and we'll um, let it rise for an hour and then we'll see what happens. It's a wet dough anyway. Uh, but we'll just kind of see what, what happens. Building size. So we need to now uh, mix in the butter. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do this. Let's just, um, we'll pause and get the mixer into position before we start. So hopefully you can see down there. I can't really do any better than that. Won't make any difference. Move that light. I think that's a little bit better. I'm going to say I don't know. No, I'll leave it there. So, turn it on. Slowly. And then drop in butter down the side. And it will slowly mix in. You can't do it all in one go. I don't know why you have to do it this way. I don't really like using the mixer to um, knead things. It's got a habit of just making everything attach itself around the claw. Or well, the dough hook. Which I find a little bit annoying. So keep dropping it in until it's all incorporated. I suppose if I did it by hand it would be a lot easier. Might end up having to do it by hand but we'll see. But I think this is this is why I'm always put off making a um, mumbalas because it's, this bit's just it just seems like a hard way to do it I mean I don't know why we couldn't just no because there's no sugar in it I don't know why we couldn't just make it like a cake I mean, will the would the yeast make the cake rise? I don't know. Um, yeah, would the would the would the butter, butter stop the from the yeast from from wanting to uh, wanting to rise? I don't know. I don't know. You get the idea of what I'm doing. And it will eventually combine itself all in together. Hopefully. Yeah, it's working. It's, getting, it, it's mixing in. It's just taking its time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it out and put it in a piping bag. And then we're going to pipe it into some butter and flour moulds. Um, it said on the recipe sugared butter and sugared moulds. I'm going to use flour. Although no, it should work. I suppose we could do it 
we could do some sugar and we could do some flour. Maybe. Right, so. Let that carry on mixing. Sort out that big lump of butter that's there. See if we can turn it up and oh no that foot is just locked, that's okay. So we'll turn it up a bit. And get it all incorporated little by little. But you don't need to see that. It's a sticky dough, it gets everywhere. That's another reason why I should won't recall it, I should I should uh, I was put off doing it. So um can we want to call it? Let's have a seat. So, if you want to know about piping, um, what you do with piping, you don't squeeze with your fingers like that. You squeeze with the palm of your hand. So you squeeze with that bit there to to, uh, to pipe. So that fingers together, not not gripped like a claw, but fingers together, and then squeeze on that part and twist round as you go. Um, I think we're going to need the scissors. To cut off the dough, it was really sticky uh, when I put it in the piping bag, and I've had to wash my hands about three times. So, sugar and uh, floured them, and then sugared. We'll see, and then how much we'll put in. I'm not so sure. Ah, that's going to be a problem, isn't it? That's the only piping bag I've got. Hmm. Right. So, there's no piping bag. Could have made a more of a mess, couldn't it? Our we'll pause and we'll, we'll sort it out. Right. Oh no, there's the pot. Maybe we'll have to do this with spoon. Oh, what do I reckon? About is that spoonful? Be a bit uneven with these. Right. Easier to cut the dough with some scissors. And then dump them in like that. Because I haven't got another piping bag. That's about right. It's probably a bit too much. I've made myself a job to do with this, haven't I? They should. As they rise. They should. Be like a like a cake mixture. But we'll see. Yeah, use the edge of the spoon to cut. That's a lot of mixture I've got to do. Can't think of an alternative. I don't think I can, I can't really use anything like a, a plastic bag as a piping bag. Because I think they'll just split the bag. We'll see how these go. So I've got some other ones, I've got some other containers. I don't know. 
if we have to, you normally have to form the bread dough. Some piping would have kind of helped you form it into a, um, into a ball, but I don't think that's going to work as such. Yeah, I don't think I'll be making these again. If they don't turn out, I'll use that um, crystallized syrup for something else. I suppose you get the hang of it as you go along. That works a bit more, doesn't it? So, we'll prove these. I'll take that now. I would have thought, and then they'll be able to be baked. Don't mind that one. But we'll see how they turn out. Fingers crossed, eh? Right, they've grown. Let's put them in the oven. 220 degrees, the fan's on. Um, 20 minutes, they're quite, quite small. Uh, we'll see uh, how they go. This is up. <laughs> Those are cooked. Those are ready, that's all right. And we've got another one in, and then we've got another tray to go in. And two trays to go in. That's all right. Uh, that's up, uh, just over 15 minutes. Uh, yeah, they have. Yeah, okay. They're going to come out of there, okay? That's fine. Let's just. Let's take them out now. And then they're uh, they won't be cut. Then they're not gonna if the sugar if the sugar remelts, they'll um, uh, if the sugar cools, it'll harden, and we won't be able to get them out. So best off take these out now. They're going to be washed up while it's still hot. We should stop the uh, look a bit more bready. Than the, the first batch I ever made, but we'll see how they go. Let's see how they go. So, uh, we'll wait until they're cool, and then we'll uh, we'll heat up some uh, syrup. They actually, look like um, images, don't they? They look like um, potato rolls. Um, so, but we'll wait until they're cool, and then we'll uh, we'll heat up some we'll heat up some syrup, and uh, we'll soak them in some syrup. Right, I have, uh, they are cool, and I've put them in containers. Uh, we best off cut into one. Okay, so right. uh, I've made 45 um, out of a kilo. Probably would have got more, but I uh, had a bit of an accident, didn't I? So, um, let's have a look. That looks all right, isn't it? That looks all right. Crispy on the outside, I think that's a good thing. I think that's a good thing. So, tastes all right. Tastes all right. I think they, I think them being kind of quite, do you know, they do taste like a potato roll. Them being a bit like that on the outside, a bit of a crust. I think that's going to be, that's going to help them um, stay together. So, Let's put some syrup on them. While I was swimming, um, where I do most of my, um, I seem to get most of my ideas, I was kind of thinking, um, well, we're going to do the, the syrup that I had in the cupboard. I melted it in some hot, in warm, water, warm water, so it's um, the crystals have kind of melted back to back to liquid. We're going to do that one, but no one else on the planet is going to have that syrup, are they? So we're going to do one with that syrup. And then we're going to do one with a syrup. I did an experiment a few months back with some syrups uh, of a, a two to one ratio. So two parts sugar to one part um, water. Uh, so for every two kilos of um, sugar, there is one kilo worth of, well, one liter worth of liquid. Uh, and I'm sure a liter of liquid weighs a kilo. So, and then I was kind of thinking, We'll do one with some spices in as well. So I've got some orange peel 
and we've got some um, star and east and we've got some cloves so we'll put a bit of dust in that it's fine no oh, it's because I have some biscuits in it it's only biscuits that'll be fine we won't worry about that um, maybe we should change it we probably should change it we've got another one no we'll leave it um, so yeah some, some rind in there let's taste it first no it's biscuit dust that's fine well that's a bit over use that one we'll use that one so and then this one uh, we'll put some syrup in just the normal syrup um, and then we'll infuse those spices into it because I have a fear I have a feeling that the spices um, stop the uh, sugar uh, from crystallizing as well so just a bit of an experiment so that's quite a thick syrup isn't it I don't know if that'll soak in. We'll soon find out, won't we? That might be too thick. That might be too thick. But anyway, right, so this is the other syrup. We're going to put more syrup in. Anyway, I'm going to top that one up with this syrup that I've made. I think I have to make some more. So syrup in over here, and then these are smaller containers. So when I put the lid on, the lid will press the rum bar, but not the rum bar, they're not rum bar bars, down into the syrup. So we'll have to top it up, we'll have to top it up again tomorrow when they're soaked in. So you can get the idea. So So the lid will go on and it'll press them down a little bit. And then we'll soak up some of the syrup and then we'll have to top up the syrup again tomorrow we'll make some more syrup uh, and kind of do it that way and then the same with yeah, that one, some more syrup in like over there so that'll top up that syrup and then we'll some more syrup in, the syrup in there so i think probably best to just add slightly warm syrup but we'll see how we go I think it'll just take a bit of time for them to soak up all that syrup. I think if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But anyway, so I'll make some more syrup, pour it over those, and make sure there's plenty. I'll just give that a bit of taste for a minute. Right? Hmm. I think it's been really nice. So make some more syrup. Put the lids on, put them in the fridge overnight. And then top up, top up again with some more syrup tomorrow. They need to be completely saturated. Syrup needs to go all the way through them. I had I wouldn't have one in a restaurant. It was a really good restaurant, and it's really disappointing that they hadn't put enough syrup in the rum barbers, and it hadn't soaked all the way through. But anyway, um, I did tell them. I just thought it was important for them to know. It wasn't a criticism. It was very nice. It was it was my favourite restaurant. Still is my favourite restaurant. Um, but anyway, so that's that. Uh, and then I'll have a look at them in the morning. And then I think this will be the end of the video. Um, because it might be like two months uh, before, before these are ready. And the thought of keeping this video on, the, on my computer for two months. And not and not and deleting it by mistake. I don't want to do that. So I think I'll... Um, this is where the video ends. And then there'll be a, a second part to, <coughs> to the video of how much of a success or a failure it is.